Today I'll be showing you three separate techniques on three different ways to repair and visibly mend your denim. Hi everyone, my name is AJ. Today I wanted to do a little tutorial on visible mending, specifically focusing on the Shishiko method. There will be timestamps down in the description. This video will basically cover a few different things. This will be like the most basic tutorial possible using the most commonly found materials. Visible mending, whether you incorporate the Shishiko method or not, is all about embracing the beauty of the wear and tear that clothing goes through and repairing it in a way that enhances the garment rather than trying to hide any signs of age or wear. And it's a fun way to kind of make your clothes more personalized to yourself, last in your closet longer, and to learn how to take care of your clothing. Now into the good stuff. So shashiko is a Japanese technique that comes from the 1600s and was used up until the 1800s in farming communities in Japan. It was an activity that was done in the winter time as a way to like mend their clothing and fill the time because you, if they were primarily a farming community, they couldn't farm as much in the winter. It became less popular um, as Japan became more westernized. Shishiko is a series of running stitches, usually in like a geometric pattern that reinforces fabric. It's not a technique that's used to sew two pieces of fabric together exactly. It's used to reinforce existing fabric with another piece of fabric and repeating running stitches. I highly recommend um, looking into Shishiko individually if visible mending becomes something that you're interested in because it's super beautiful. Um, today we will be focusing on just like very simple fundamental stitches. previously mentioned this is a beginner tutorial so we won't be using any chalk and we won't be using any fabric erasable pens this is freehand we ended up using like this off-white beige color and black thread for the day but you can really use any sort of embroidery thread this is just craft thread that you can get at michael's um, traditional shishiko thread is more loosely wound and really this thread or any thicker kind of craft bracelet thread is fine to use. Next up you will need pins, scissors, need some sort of measuring device. I'm using a quilting ruler. You will not be using any of these smaller needles. You'll need one with a slightly thicker um, width and like a slightly bigger threading head. You don't want to use too big of a needle because you don't want to leave like holes when you're stitching that make the thread pull through too easily, but you want to use a slightly bigger needle because you will be using a thicker thread so it needs to make enough of a hole that the thicker thread can then go through the fabric. And then you will need your damaged denim. I'm using some scrap denim, um, but you can obviously use the pair of jeans that you are repairing or the pants or whatever. I'm primarily gonna be focusing on denim in this tutorial. And then you will need some scrap denim from another pair of jeans or another project. So even if a pair of jeans or a shirt is past the point of repair, you should still keep it so that you can use it to make patches. Um, you can also use any sort of like similar in weight and feel um, woven fabric to make the patches or to make the backgrounds. Um, I'm just doing denim on denim because I happen to use a lot of denim in my work, but it can, it can be very cute and fun to use another type of like woven fabric or scrap fabric that you have. The whole purpose of this is to use materials that you already have that are already accessible and to like lengthen the lifespan of textiles in your closet, in your work. First, we'll be using a running stitch to reinforce a whole area, including using a patch behind the damaged part of your pant. To visibly mend with a running stitch, the first step is to clean up the area where there is a tear by trimming away all the loose strings and giving yourself a nice, easy workspace. You can cut this area to be a more even shape if you want, but I kept the shape of the hole as it was naturally. The second step is going to be to select what contrast fabric you're gonna use underneath or on the inside of your pant leg. 
This is something you can do with like the same color fabric to try to make it less visible, or you can use a contrast fabric. You do want to mind which direction the weave of your pant versus the weave of the fabric you're going to be using to repair it goes. And I think that these types of repairs work better when the weave is going in the same direction and the lines match up. Next, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure around the whole space. You're going to want to do about half an inch to an inch on all sides. Um, definitely feel your fabric. If it feels super thin, you're going to want the patch to be larger behind the hole to reinforce the area. The purpose of a running stitch is to attach as much of the fabric to the area as possible to reinforce weakened fabric around the hole or affected area as well. It's not just a stitch that's used to attach the edges of a patch. So it is a good idea to make your patch an inch or larger behind the affected area because your stitches are going to go around both layers of denim. Here I am just trimming down the shape of the patch. If you were using a pair of actual jeans for this, you would turn the jeans inside out. I just flipped over my denim. And now I'm going to pin the patch into place on the outside of the denim. So you would turn your pants right side facing out. Next, select your needle and your thread, and you're gonna thread it through the head of the needle and pull a decent amount. It doesn't matter if you run out of thread, I'm gonna show you how to reattach it if you need to change out your thread. Um, next, you're gonna double knot one end of the thread by wrapping it around your finger, creating a loop, tucking the short end of the thread through the loop and pulling tight. You're then going to repeat that process and line up the second knot on top of the first knot, as you can see here. And that's going to stabilize your thread when you start doing your stitching. Next, turn your jeans inside out and you're going to start on the inside of the jeans so that you won't be able to see the knot as you are repairing. I'm speeding it up here, but basically I use the width of my finger to measure this um, and I'm going in and out, back and forth through the front and back of the fabric. When I reach the end of a line, I simply move down, which is going to leave a border of vertical stitches, which you will be able to see at the end. This is it in real speed. So I'm just going in and out and I will show you what the front of the patch looks like as well. You can see on the left hand side that I'm going longer than the area of the patch. This is going to make it so that the edge doesn't pick up around your leg. You can measure this weave out with a ruler, but I do find that if you just use a consistent width back and forth, that it does come out looking pretty neat. Um, and this is once again, a very beginner friendly approach. So if you misjudged the amount of embroidery thread that you need, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna start the process from the beginning over and make a knot. And then you're gonna re-thread your needle. And then you're just gonna start right where you left off. And from the front, you won't be able to tell that you started with a new thread. I'm literally putting it as close as possible to the last spot that I knotted off and then just continuing to weave the thread in and out, back and forth. Once you get to the end, you're gonna knot it through the last stitch by looping it through. I'm using my finger to hold the loop and then you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna bring it back through the loop that I'm creating with my right hand like that. And then once that's pulled taut, you're going to do that process one more time just to make sure it's really secure by going under your last stitch, creating a loop with your finger, and then putting the needle back through that loop. And here's what the finished running stitch looks like with the vertical threads framing the area and you've now reinforced your fabric. The second method that I will be teaching you is how to use a whip stitch to make a clean edge and attach the patch behind the denim. A whip stitch is used to attach the border of a patch and is less of a reinforcing stitch. So you're gonna start the same exact way where you're trimming all the extra thread and making a clean surface for you to mend. For this one, I picked a contrast dark fabric. 
I'm gonna measure an inch on all sides before cutting out my fabric. You'll notice I cut a more even ovular shape and that is because a whip stitch is used to reinforce the outside edge of a hole when mending or to attach a patch. So it's basically a border only stitch. I then chose my thread after pinning it down, which is this black thread. And I'm gonna to proceed to pull an amount of thread, cut it, knot it the same way that we did in the last tutorial. And then here I'm deciding that I'm going to tuck the outside raw edge of this hole underneath while I'm stitching. This will prevent further fraying and give a nice clean edge to the border. As you're going through, you're going to start from the inside of your pant leg and go upwards around the edge. You want to catch the underside edge of your patch the folded in edge and the top layer of your pair of jeans in every single upward stitch and then on the downward stitch that goes back through the fabric you're going to only go through the patch material so you get these little line stitches that go the opposite way of your fabric and look like little lines coming off of the hole as you can see here once you get a row of these going around and attaching your fabric, you could also go back through and continue doing this again and again to create a solid border around the whole of your material. I use my pins to secure some of the folds as I got closer to the edge to make sure that everything laid flat. I really like the effect of the whip stitch and I often use it when I'm attaching a patch to the outside of a pair of jeans or a piece as well, not just um, when I'm attaching something from underneath. Once you get to the end, you're gonna flip your jeans inside out and then you're gonna do a similar process to the first knot where you knot it off by looping two separate times and this is the finished result from the outside as a border stitch. Third method you will be learning today is how to make an X or crisscross stitch. We'll be using this to make a patch over a tear in your denim opposed to being underneath. Third will be how to repair a larger rip by putting a patch on the outside of your jeans opposed to reinforcing from the inside. So for this one you'll do the same process of selecting a piece of denim and measuring out the area. You'll want to go about an inch if not larger around the ripped area. Go larger if your fabric feels weaker around the stitch to reinforce it. As this is super beginner friendly we will be doing a raw edge on this patch and we're going to pin it in place to the outside of our pair of jeans or the area that we are repairing. For this tutorial, I only use this stitch around the border, but you can go across the whole panel like we did with the running stitch to create a really pretty pattern and to reinforce the whole area. When attaching a patch, it is important to start with the border to make sure that we really reinforce it. So go ahead and tie the double knot at the end of your thread, thread it into the needle, and this is what the stitch is going to look like. To start, go from the inside of your pant leg, push upwards through the fabric. For the border, you only want to catch the main pant leg, and then you're gonna go diagonally down about a quarter of an inch through both layers of fabric before going to the top corner, and then pulling upwards through both layers of fabric, and then finishing it off going only through the pant leg. I'm gonna do it a few more times just so you can see it. So we're gonna go up through only the pant leg and then diagonally a quarter of an inch down. Again, I use my fingertip to measure through both the patch and the pant leg. We're then gonna to go to the upper right-hand corner opposite of the first stitch, about a quarter inch apart, pull up through the pant leg, through the patch, and then we're gonna end it by going down through the pant leg only to create this little X. This is going to solidify how the fabric is attached to the border. You're gonna continue this same process across the patch if you end up wanting to fill in the whole patch with Xs, but instead of only catching around the border, you'll do all the stitches through both layers of fabric. I think this stitch has a really nice effect and it looks um, a bit more advanced than it actually is because it's just 
two running stitches crossed into each other and then from the inside it's going to look like two layers of straight running stitches and have a pretty clean approach and i like using this as a border stitch because i think that where the x's are look very cute now let's knot off the thread after we finish an edge once you get to the end you're going to knot it through the final stitch hold a loop with your finger and then you're going to pull it taut you're going to repeat that process a second time for security going through the stitch creating a loop and then you're going to bring the needle back through that loop and then pull it taut and then trim the extra thread that is left over this is to make sure it's nice and secure and that you've created a good knot so nothing will come unraveled and this will be what it looks like around the border and i'm going to go ahead and complete the whole edge of this fabric and i'll show you the process again from this edge the important part about the edge stitch being an x is that the edge of your patch is in the center of the x's if you're using this as a fill in the center of a patch stitch it will be a little bit less important where the center of the X's are. Because this stitch is a little harder, I'm gonna keep the visual of what I'm doing on the screen for anyone to watch um, to kind of get a better hang of it. This is the first tutorial I've ever done, but I'm really interested in sharing more knowledge on how to repair your clothes because the most sustainable clothing is the clothing you already have in your closet. Please let me know if anyone has any questions. Thank you so much for watching.